we move on to the second panel and um, it's a pleasure to welcome General Thakur who has uh, had the longest trip from India so a uh, warm welcome and we are looking forward to your talk. Good afternoon everyone. In next 30 minutes I shall talk about and share with you the relevance of moral philosophy of Oswald Spengler to the Indian civilization. I will also put across the highlights of my month-long research in the various libraries in, the, in India and try and tell you what did various Indian philosophers and writers have written about Oswald Spengler. I come from India, which is home to one-sixth of humanity. I come from the land which has multiple religions, Hinduism, majority religion, Islam, mm -hmm. Christianity, Buddhism, Jainism, and Sikhism. And I come from a land where people believe in the concept of karma. And as uh, Dr. Sebastian was saying, that uh, uh, if, if a man or a woman does good deed, then in our concept, he or she gets happier rebirths. And conversely, if the deeds are not so good, then the rebirths are maybe in the forms of animals or plants. So that is the concept of karma as per Hindu religion. As per Hindu religion, we also believe that the soul has to take multiple rebirths before it, gets, it can get liberated and merges with the God. And the number of rebirths the soul has to take is, as written in front of you, 8.4 million times. It's a, long, it's a pretty long journey. Indian civilization is about 5,000 years old. And the, the greatness of Indian civilization was acknowledged and recognized by none other than Oswald Spengler. And I salute him because uh, to, uh, to, put, uh, to give the right due to the Indian civilization amongst the other Eastern civilizations. And this is what, I mean, this is the, I have, I have actually read the English version. The German version, I have purchased it only about seven hours ago in the morning before I left Bonn. So this is what I have quoted. We all know he advocates the Copernicus model of looking at history and looking at other civilizations. And therein he also acknowledges, that, as is written in the last line of the first text box, he says that maybe the Eastern civilizations may surpass the Western civilization in terms of spiritual uh, greatness and soaring power. He also mentions that the, the Western view of world civilization while giving the right place to cities like Florence, Athens, and Paris, but it relegates the importance of cities like Patliputra in India and the other Loyang in Malaysia. With this as a small introduction, I will cover my presentation in the three parts as shown. What has Oswald Spengler written on Indian civilization? And having said that, then I will cover what is the relevance of Oswald Spengler's thoughts to India in the current times. Coming to part one, Oswald Spengler writes about how destiny played a role in not letting Napoleon become great or not letting Napoleon achieve the victories or achievements that he wanted to. And he quotes these, a small naval incident of 1804, wherein the squadron led by Charles Alexander Leon Durand de Nois of the French Navy was defeated by the squadron of the British East India Company on 14 February 1804. And this small incident led to the abandonment of the plans of the expansion plans of the French in India. He also quotes another incident wherein the Tsar Alexander of Russia, although he had initially offered support 
to Napoleon for a joint invasion of India and to drive the British out. But he backed out subsequently. So this is uh, what Oswald Spengler writes about how destiny prevented the establishment of a French colonial empire in India. The next slide I will show you uh, just to further uh, support the point that Spengler has mentioned is that 50 years before, in 1754, there was another incident uh, which has been written by many French authors because uh, France, to France, this missed opportunity of establishing a colonial empire like the British had done was something very important and something that it pinched them and they have written about it for a very long time. So in 1754, when France was capturing more territories in India and under the governorship of uh, Duplex, who was the governor of Pondicherry, this was not appreciated by the, uh, by the Versailles court and uh, instead of supporting him, Duplex was recalled back. And ironically, similar thing was being done by Cly Clive of British. And, the, and Clive was given full support. And 1757, three years later, the British fought this battle of Place. It was, it was the beginning of their establishment of Colum beginning of the British rule in India. So this is another incident, although it is not mentioned by Oswald Spengler, which happened and which again shows how destiny plays a role. And subsequently, in 1857, was another opportunity which the French, France missed, was when the Indians revolted against the British Empire. And in that revolt, which lasted for almost about one and a half years, and which, which literally and almost threw the British out of the India, Indian subcontinent. And when the revolt was going on, uh, again, these possibilities and the hopes in the French mind were revived that look, uh, maybe we get a possibility. And lastly, French, Frenchmen always considered themselves to be more benign, benevolent and a value-based <laughs> colonizing power and rather than the exploitative and a, and a materialistic uh, no, British colonial rule. I come to the next point. Uh, Spengler also writes about the imperial nature of the Mauryan Empire and of, also of the Sunga dynasty. And Mauryan Empire was from 321 BC to 185 BC. And, uh, but he's, he also, Spengler gives a, a not a very happy remark about uh, uh, the empire of that time. He says that these, uh, these imperialistic uh, no, endeavors However, could not could only be confused and inefficient. Indian nature uh, being what it is. So anyway, this is this is what he has written about the Indian nature at that point of time, uh, about uh, 2,300 years ago. So so this is what he has written about Mauryan and uh, Sunga dynasty. I'm very happy. I was very happy to read about uh, the fact that uh, Spengler has written so much about Buddhism and uh, Buddhism, I would say is one of the very unique uh, religion. Uh, we are all aware about Buddhism. And he says that unlike other religions, and in fact, he, he quotes uh, Nietzsche also that Nietzsche and religions, uh, they impose a code of conduct on, on human beings. But he says, Buddhism does not quote, impose any code of conduct. In fact, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to a large extent, even the Hinduism does not pose a human uh, a, a strict code of conduct. Uh, I mean, uh, you can, uh, as a Hindu, uh, you can worship uh, a goddess, or you can uh, worship a snake, you can worship a phallus, you can worship moon, or you may not worship any, any god. You can go to a temple, you may not go to a temple. Uh, so, so that way, <laughs> Hinduism is also... Uh, a late, no, late, uh, is also a religion like that. So he also mentions that Buddhism is not a religion at all in the sense of the religions of the Vedas. And uh, 
lastly uh, spengler highlights that uh, about the influence of uh, buddhism on the indian philosophy so this philosophy indian philosophy of multiple rebirths and then the soul attaining uh, uh, liberation that also underwent a change because of the influence of buddhism i now come to part 2 that is the what is the relevance of spengler's thoughts and spengler's ideas to india in the present times i would say the first point is that what he has advocated for the western civilization of looking at other civilizations with equal importance and having a copernicus model and uh, i think we in india also need to have the same approach uh why i'm saying is that uh, well every civilization has its own strong points and and indian civilization uh the kind of spirituality uh the kind of uh, our ancient culture is something that as an indian i am very proud of it and uh, but it should not happen that i say that my religion is the is the, is a religion which no religion can a uh, no religion can match or surpass or my civilization is 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 the civilization so i mean that is a view point that i think uh, we need to avoid so this is a message i think is very pertinent uh to us in india and the second uh uh relevance of spengler's thoughts is is today uh if i can come to the last bullet first unlike 100 years before there is so much of intermingling of people and ideas that uh, definitely uh what spengler said that civilization is a living organism and one civilization does not change by the influence of the other civilization but i think we may not change as a as a civilization per se but i'm sure we can as far as indian civilization is concerned we can pick up the the the, uh, the best practices or good points in the other civilization and we can try and imbibe those i'm sure it is happening as it is because when people reach pangler and they get a broad world view of the various civilizations and they they get to know the strengths of let's say egyptian civilization that in egyptian civilization uh, they uh, from the uh, mummies you get still see their facial ex expression of a pharaoh uh, whose mummy uh, was maybe 2000 years ago so it is something uh, uh, even we have concepts like time capsule Uh, that uh, we store some data and it has to be opened only in 2050 so these are the ideas which uh, i think i'm sure the youth who read about or philosophers who read about spengler these ideas naturally are imbibed and are taken note of i now come to part 3 which is yeah and which is the longest part this is the this is the first book uh, which that i have uh, shown in front of you fundamental questions in aesthetics by pc chatterjee and this book was written in 1968 and it, this was the outcome of a research project under dr nihar ranjan which who is the director of the indian institute of advanced study in shimla shimla is a hill station in north india and this indian institute of advanced study has a very advanced uh, department of philosophy and where chatterjee mentions about spengler is when he first he talks about how yeats had described the cycle of birth and death in his poems phases of the moon and the great wheel and then he is talking about spengler then i come to another book which has been written by is an article by yashdev shalya uh, which he wrote this article uh, in the sofia endological series uh the sofia endological series is a, they are publishing books and journals to promote uh, independent as well as comparative 
study of german and indian philosophical systems so this article was written and in which yashdev shalya says that history can be classified in three categories history as a goal oriented process and the one who writes is historicist and as a imaginative construct and thirdly as a flow of events with man's petty shoggery so he he has classified as per him spengler has been classified as a historicist along with uh, hegel marx the puranas puranas are the indian scriptures and the christian philosophers then there is another book by dp Ch chatopadhyay knowledge freedom and language and this book was published in 1989 from delhi he is also saying that spengler defended a sort of fatalism that something the civilizations have to disappear they will disappear and uh, rejecting the cause and effect theory then uh, there is a book philosophy and human development by t s devados and here interestingly he is drawing a comparison between schopenhauer mahatma gandhi and oswald schmidt so uh, he writes that uh, schopenhauer regards buddha and christ as ideal personalities because they have renounced all material things in life and he adds that oswald schmidt considered facts and power to be more significant than truth and contemplation then there is another book by mn roy reason romanticism and revolution and this book was written way back in 1952 and uh, with the view to outline a comprehensive philosophy which linked social and political practice with the scientific metaphysics of rationality and ethics and then he is writing about the vico cyclic theory of history and which uh <clears throat> he says he says that it could logically lead to spenglerism the downfall of the west so this is his view that he has written in it and he also uh, comments that by declaring that the national natural law of the people of the 17th century was the product of the second age of man vico had anticipated spengler's gloomy oracle then i come to this is a fairly recent book written in 2013 philosophy and in india by a raghu ramaraju this has been published from oxford university press and in fact raghu ramaraju says that many indian philosophers have actually not understood the western philosophy and he tells them that you please read uh, oswald spengler read this book decline of the west and then you will not be so critical about western western philosophy because uh, uh, many indian philosophers are of the view that you no know, western philosophy always trying to undermine religions or civilization like indian civilization then there are two books by uh orun ghosh orun ghosh passed away in 2016 the first book uh, sorry the first book is the science society and philosophy and this was written in 1985 when he was 68 years old and this is again he writes uh, what we all know about spengler's theory of uh, civilization passing through four phases and he also mentions that spengler initially supported the nazis but later fell out with them his uh, second book in which he has written a lot about spengler the convergence of civilizations and which was published 3 years later and uh, this has been published by the name i have given the publication um, unfortunately i have not been able to get hold of this book so uh, once i get back i am going to read up on this then there is a translation in hindi language darshan shastra parichay uh, which is which is actually hindi translation of introduction to philosophy so this book introduction to philosophy by george thomas white patrick has been translated in hindi language so that more students in our country can read this and this translation was done as a initiative by the education ministry of the government of haryana haryana is one of the states northern state of india so in this basically he is writing about the uh, he's i mean it is a translation so uh, you know what uh, has been written in this book introduction to philosophy i'm sure alex is aware about it so he is writing about the american civilization uh, 
I now come to, I would like to conclude uh, by saying that having read Oswald Spengler, Decline of the West, and having read many books who have commented about Oswald Spengler, and I have not included the books written by the Westerners who have commented on Oswald Spengler. I have only commented on the Indian authors. I I am of firm conviction that mm -hmm. Oswald Spengler's ideas have great depth and have much relevance even after a passage of 100 years. I am also convinced that the presence of Oswald Spengler's ideas in the Indian academic landscape is significant. What I have presented to you today is only an outcome of research of four weeks. In the last 50, 60 years, people from India have written about him. And I am actually eager to get back and continue with this uh, to give you further insight as to what people in our country have written and have written and have read and written about Oswald Shem. <coughs> and lastly, I am grateful to the Spengler Society for having uh, given me this opportunity to. Uh, to leave aside all my other work and uh, and my main area of research, so uh, I got a chance to leave everything aside, only read about Oswald Schneider, and uh, all, and uh, enhance my understanding of the history by reading history of philosophy. Uh, so for that, I am very grateful. I am grateful to Professor David, Professor Orchard, Mars, and uh, to. Uh, to everyone else uh, who have been associated with this, thank you very much. And if there are any questions, I will try and answer.